In this video, I'm going to be talking about what medical affairs is, what kind of jobs exist within the umbrella of medical affairs, as well as the skills and qualifications you may need to get into a medical affairs job. So let's begin with a definition of medical affairs. Medical affairs is a function within a life sciences company, usually a pharmaceutical or medical device company that communicates scientific and clinical information to the broader medical community that includes healthcare providers as well as patients. Often the main goal of a medical affairs arm of a pharmaceutical company or of a medical device company is to disseminate clinical and scientific information in a balanced manner, in a fair manner, and in a way that ultimately improves patient care. So medical affairs really does connect the company with what's really happening with healthcare providers as well as patients. Another role of medical affairs is to help drive innovation. And the way they do this is really because they are that contact with the outside world, outside of the company, right? They're able to collect insights and data and conversations of what people are really saying out there and bring that information back so that the company can innovate and drive new product development. Now, while medical affairs may look slightly different from company to company, usually you're going to find these three types of medical affairs roles within pharmaceutical and medical device companies. The first one is the medical science liaison role. That's a really popular one. And I've actually done a whole interview with a real life MSL on this channel. You can definitely check out that video after this one, but basically what MSLs are responsible for is fostering relationships with clinicians and researchers out there in the field and bringing them on board um, to participate in clinical trials for a drug or a medical device, right? This is one of the main foci for an MSL. They do so much more and definitely watch that video. They do so much more, but this is a focus for them. Within medical affairs, you also have medical communications and I'm a medical communications professional. I've talked a lot about my career here on this channel but essentially medical communications professionals within medical affairs will work on gathering the data, publishing data and writing SOPs, writing technical documents. They may also be responsible for creating educational material, right? That is given to the healthcare providers or even the patients. So there's medical communications within medical affairs. Then another role, which I thought was fascinating is the health economics and outcomes research group. This is a function within medical affairs and their role really is to evaluate, right? The outcomes of the drug or medical device on various outcomes, including things like clinical effectiveness, safety, quality of life, cost effectiveness, and patient satisfaction and probably physician satisfaction as well, right? So the H-E-O-R folks are also going to work within medical affairs to perform this function. And based on that data that they collect on the effect that their product has on these outcomes, the company is able to make informed decisions. Okay, so what skills do you need to have in order to break into a medical affairs profession? Well, often the people that get into these roles have some kind of life sciences background or a healthcare background. And so we're talking about maybe a PhD in the different life sciences sciences, a PharmD, an MD. More recently, I've seen people that have nursing degrees, not necessarily doctoral prepared, or people that have physician assistant degrees who get into medical affairs. This does not mean that if you don't have any of these types of degrees, you cannot get into medical affairs. It's just that most of the time these backgrounds are preferred. And that's because often these backgrounds will have the requisite clinical and scientific background and knowledge that is required for them to work in these roles that really, you know, it's in the pharmaceutical industry, it's in the medical device industry that really give them a running start. Before I continue, I hope you're getting value from this video. If you are, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button 
and subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Being familiar with regulatory rules and laws of bodies like the FDA or the European version of the FDA is going to be really important in order to get into medical affairs because ultimately we're talking about drugs and medical devices here. They need to be approved by the government in order for them to be used for humans. Also, actually, before I even continue, I did find out that medical affairs professionals do exist within the pet and veterinary industry as well. So this is an area you can look into if you have that background, right? If you have pets, if you have, you know, you have anything to do with veterinary medicine, veterinary sciences, there is medical affairs within this area. So anything I'm talking about with regards to human health, there are parallels with animal health, okay? If you're going to work in especially MSL roles, you're going to have interpersonal skills because in this role, you have to talk to people, you have to build relationships with people, you have to nurture those relationships, right? And so having really great interpersonal skills is going to be important, especially if you're gonna become an MSL. For a lot of the people that are in medical communications, I can tell you most of the time, it's just me and my computer, most, <laughs> medical communications professionals will be creating behind the scenes most of the time um, and HEOR I'm guessing it's similar as well but definitely if you want to go the MSL route within medical affairs talking to people is going to be really important. Strong analytical and critical thinking skills that allow you to problem solve, allow you to think about data, allow you to think about some of the questions people bring up when you know when you collect that data is also going to be really important if you want to get into medical affairs. Presentation skills are also really important. I know that MSLs end up doing a lot of presentations, but even for me who works within medical communications, not necessarily in a regulatory environment, one of the things that's really important is I tend to prepare a lot of presentations and posters and other material for my team members. And so it's really important that you also have communication skills, even if you're going to, well, you're going to medical communications, you better have good, <laughs> good presentation and communication skills, right? So those also come in really, really handy when you're in medical communications, right? So within medical affairs in general, having good presentation and communication skills is going to work in your favor. And then since since this ultimately is a role that is focused on the customer, having great customer service is also going to be important, right? Because this is very a very customer centric role. You'll, you'll whether you work, you know, in gathering data from customers or turning customer insights into um, into educational material, or you are the MSL that is going out there and interacting with physicians. It's absolutely going to be important for you to have a customer service spirit. Yeah, let me put it that way. It's really going to be important for you to have great customer service. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up or let me know in the comments below.